This is Megapine. Megapine. M I P. With Masamela Matsumo. Mark Thompson. Megapine. Get woke. Nice buns. Soft, fluffy, and ultra low net carbs. Discover Hero Bread, the delicious ultra low net carb bread with incredible taste and texture. Hero Bread has zero grams of sugar and is under 100 calories per serving. Plus, high in fiber with 5 to 10 grams of protein per serving. Order from Hero.co now and get 10% off your first purchase with promo code AH10. That's 10% off with code AH10. H-E-R-O dot C-O. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. At about 5.30 a.m. this morning, the Atlanta City Council voted to pass the legislation that would build Cop City. I want to let you know all about that. I spent yesterday here in Atlanta, testified at the city council, rallied with demonstrators there to talk about Cop City and what it means and how egregious it is to build something like this immediately after the reckoning this nation had after the killings of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. No one in Atlanta wants this. The majority of the support for Cop City comes from outside of Atlanta, as a matter of fact. I want to share with you some of the sentiments that we heard yesterday. First of all, we'll hear from activist Marcus T. Coleman, Queen Yonazdahar, a dear friend, and another dear friend, the Reverend Lennox Yearwood of the Hip Hop Caucus. They set the stage for why we were at the city council yesterday. Tell everybody why we're here today. Uh, well, we're sitting here in Atlanta because they have an important vote coming up, uh, a vote to see how much taxpayers' dollars are going to go towards the completion of this project. But the twist of today is originally, it was said that it would be $31 million. Uh, there is now what they're calling a message blunder they are calling it a, uh, could have been rolled out a little bit better by the mayor's office, the messaging, but there is a reallocation of funds that will be in addition to this 31 million, and it's making it from 31 to 67. There is a 36 additional reallocation of funds that has been discovered that they will be voting on, but what's important for the listeners is to know that this reallocation of funds is for the city of Atlanta to rent buildings in what is called Cop City. And who might they be renting from? the Atlanta Police Foundation. So all of this fluff and puff about the minimization of the police's role in this project, again, $36 million has been discovered, which is a message blunder, according to them, that will go to pay, uh, that will go to pay rent to the Atlanta Police Foundation. I'll end with this. The Atlanta Police Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit. It wasn't until folks like myself and Queen and others got up uh, uh, in these streets in 2020 and lit Georgia up like never before. It wasn't just the surrounding Atlanta metro area, Ackworth and other areas. And the governor doubled down then, executive orders building protective barriers around police. The Georgia General Assembly, I know the national audience, y'all like to cheer about Georgia's blue, Georgia ain't a bit more blue. And for the record, I can care whether you're blue, red, pyru, a crip, I'm about your, 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 your policies <laughs> and, and, and your character. But because of those red dots that outnumber all the other dots in the Georgia General Assembly, they've been pencil whipping us ever since the uprising. So. The Atlanta Police Foundation is now the most second powerful police foundation in the country since, as of 2020, only behind New York City. And we know how New York get down. So the people are here to demand that, uh, that this be taken back to committee. Again, the spike from 31 million to 67 million, that's a big jump. And so we were, we were trying to get this thing sent back to committee that would end up uh, not being able to be budgeted in this calendar year. It would have to go a full cycle. Uh, if that doesn't work, then I know there's a referendum plan. We can talk more about that later. But it's just a beautiful thing. I'll close with this. It is an array of folks. It is a, 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 a beautiful coalition uh, that crosses generational lines, it crosses cultural lines, and it crosses lines of faith. And uh, all of us have one common goal and one mission, and that's to stop this militarized project. Wait, wait, I'm going to set this up, though. Who are our friends, who are our allies, and who are our enemies on this city council? 
who are we looking, who's voting with us, who's vo trying to vote against us, who's holding out? Well, to be quite honest, sir, there, there, there's 15 council members. Mm -hmm. uh, we only got about three that's on our side. I'm just, just to be a really? realist here. Yeah, we've got to be a realist here. I mean, I have the chance and everything, and I'm, I feel them, and, and, and I'm with it, but uh, it's a it's an uphill battle. That's why the bring it back to committee play, because some of them are on the fence. They don't want to get up and say, stop Cop City, but they might be willing to say, hey, well, maybe because of this, fiscal spike or this reallocation of funds that wasn't included originally, maybe they'll take it back to committee. All right. But, but again, man, 15 council members. Um, and he's a black council member. Well, you know, um, all skin folk ain't your kin folk. So what are they getting out of this? If the masses are saying no, I mean, aren't they endangering their popularity? Yeah, their populism well, with the masses they, well you know let's just let's just be real we know that corporate this is this is the bad part of corporate funders when they're looking for our money for their campaign a lot of you know even though we as people we donate but a lot of this is a lot from major corporate so-called not a non-profit that that um that fund these politicians you know there's um, coca-cola is all involved in this um there's so many major banks and funders that are funding this um cops city so it, it's um yeah but we we do have the power to vote them out um but we really need to put the put the pressure on corporate funders and yeah. and uh, and you know and so shout out to color of change you could go to color right. of change uh, to be able to sign the petition because it's all about divestment which is really really cool um really key for this um myself and hip-hop caucus we have reverend yearwood with us um but we we campaign the divestment piece for standing rock and so many other environmental things so i'm happy that reverend yearwood from the hip-hop caucus came in as well because this is also an environmentalist and a um, fight as well as um, police terrorism this is an environmental piece too the land that we're talking about right lennox yep. yeah the will any force i mean but it's also big in that from a civil rights component I do want to say that it is important for other sorts of organizations to be a part of this. I, ha I haven't really seen this on the forefront of other civil and human rights organizations talking about what is going on here in Atlanta. And I think that being the kind of the birthplace of the civil rights movement and them not talking about this, not being as present, not putting resources to this fight is a little bit disheartening. And, I'm, and it's a call to them right now to definitely use their voices across wherever they may be to speak up, as well as the environmental community. We are also requesting them, this is an environmental issue, it has an environmental impact, and that this is, a, this is an issue where we know that climate justice is racial justice, and racial justice is climate justice. And so this, these are all intersectional and connected. So one of the things here that's important about this situation is also that this has already claimed lives. Tortuguita was killed in January, ironically at the same time as the King's birthday. Mm. While many were celebrating his birthday and having a day off, Tortuguita was killed. Now we know shot many times. And so this is a situation And here. then for those who don't know, because that didn't get a lot of national play, who is Tortuguita? Tell us what happened to Tortuguita. Non-binary. Yeah, non-binary activist, uh, person of color. They, they were... They were, they were a forced defender. Forced defender were, is a group of those who were sitting at the Wounding Force fighting against what is the proposed site for Cop City. And in that process, while they were there, um, they were assassinated. And to met on record, while we have seen companies like Exxon and, and Shell killing other activists around the world, this becomes one of the first climate activists, which is an activist who were killed right here in Atlanta of all places. Protesting this. Protesting yes. this. And so I think that that's one of the things. That, and that happened on site, didn't it? Yep, it happened on at the actual site. At the actual site. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit more about the audience, a little bit more about the site, though. And the, the sacredness was, um, of the site, yes. the environmental nature so of the as, site. As we know, this is all indigenous land. I have my land back, ceremonies back, everything back. What do you call this you're wearing? Land back. This is my oh, you're land. You're supposed to say a t shirt. A t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> little inside joke. Right, right, right. <laughs> I, I had on a jacket that had Native American <laughs> stuff. And when I went on his show on, uh, when he was on Sirius, he was like, what is, what is this? And I said, it's a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I have my land back, ceremonies back, everything back. Um, so it, it's time for us to be able to get everything back. And, and that's what this is also all about. Um, Georgia. What, what, what indigenous people were here? It was the Muscogee Creek, okay. Cherokee. Um, Choctaw, Chickasaw, um, the Seminoles, um, which, which is all Muscogee, but they were all here in Georgia. And then there was many Trail of Tears um, that pushed many of them out, but we are still here. Um, indigenous people are still here. And so this, this particular area was ceremonial. 
to the Muskogee Creek people. Um, and then from there was a prison farm. Mm -hmm. And then right now it is a whole, it's, it's forest. And um, it is the lungs of Atlanta. Um, if you come to Georgia, it's nothing but trees everywhere, but they are chopping down these trees. And we and they said that they will plant more trees once they do Cop City. But the thing is, we don't want GMO trees. Mm. We don't want GMO trees. As someone that is battling stage four lung cancer, I don't want to breathe GMO trees. Mm. And so that's something that's really important because they don't, we don't need, why would they chop down trees to replace it with a, with a GMO tree? We, we need exactly what God has given us, which is our land, trees, air, water. And then they will be building this militarized police um, training facility and that what they're saying is that this militarized police training facility will also be used for the firefighters and the EMT and they're trying to make, trying it, to make it right make it really fancy and all that but to, let's let's be real 81 acres of it will be used for all of the all of the war tactics we have seen in Israel the Israel defense that has trained so many people in Israel to fight, to kill and murder Palestinians have also trained police here in America. Yeah. And so they, this is this cop city is built. The police that's in your city, no matter what city you're in that you're tuning into right now, they will be coming here to do this militarized police training. Myself, Reverend Yearwood, was in Standing Rock. We was up against militarized police. I am battling lung cancer because of the chemicals of tear gas and all, all the other chemicals they put on us. It's of myself and about 60 of, 60 of us all have different forms of lung cancer and 10 people have already died. So shout out to Congresswoman Cori Bush and Alexandria Acacia. They was able to find out that tear gas is a cancerogen, autoimmune, um, you could catch autoimmune and also infertility mm. with tear gas. So we don't need these type of militarized tactics. We don't need them to, we need them to protect and serve, protect us from outside forces that are trying to do terrorism on us. We are not your domestic terrorists. We are forest defenders. We are earth protectors. We are civil rights, human rights protectors. And that's who we are. Water protectors, everything. But we are not domestic terrorists. No, no question about it. So, and it's interesting, you know, how some black folk, probably some of these too, will share this with you. At go to Atlanta tenure. City Hall, or you go to Atlanta.gov, go to the city, okay. um, city hall, I mean, I'm sorry, city council meeting. Channel, channel 26. Channel 26. Channel 26. But, but it's no, online. Online, online, online is it's a... On, online. Atlanta.gov. Oh, it should be online, yeah. Atlanta.gov. Yeah. I just go to the main, the main uh, site. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So go there and you can see, you can uh, see what's up. Okay. We want to thank all of y'all for being with us. Folks, this is exactly right. They're going to be training y'all's police. This affects you. Yes. This is going to be, this is going to be a, a, a place to train and militarize police in your community. So this is us going backwards, not going forwards. Not going forwards. Since uh, 2020. Nice buns, soft, fluffy, and ultra low net carbs. Discover Hero Bread, the delicious ultra low net carb bread with incredible taste and texture. Hero Bread has zero grams of sugar and is under 100 calories per serving. Plus, high in fiber with 5 to 10 grams of protein per serving. Order from Hero.co now and get 10% off your first purchase with promo code AH10. That's 10% off with code AH10. H-E-R-O dot C-O. Ladies and gentlemen, we also had an opportunity to speak with Reverend Kiana Jones of Community Movement Builders here in Atlanta. And we asked the question, she addresses the issue about the worst that could happen. And it did early this morning with the Atlanta City Council voting to fund building of Cop City. We asked her, what would happen if we did not win the vote to stop Cop City? The city council hearing, which has been taking place all day, um, and it's going to be taking place into the night. Hundreds of people testifying, everyone to a person testifying against Cop City. Reverend Jones, it's good to see you in person. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you feeling about today? I feel good about today. I am just, as usual, 
overwhelmed and amazed by this community that continues to show up to stand against Cop City. We have showed up in record numbers again. We thought May 15th was something. We have doubled numbers today. So much so that they made it a point to try to discourage people from coming into the building today by saying that it would be closed. And when we got here, they were literally making it a one-to-one -one trade off so that the only time a person could come into the building was if someone left out because they were claiming that we were over capacity according to the fire code. <laughs> so what happens after today? The goal, the minimum, is to get them to send this thing back to committee, right? Yes, correct. We would love it if the majority of this Atlanta City Council would vote to send this piece of legislation for further funding of Cop City back into a committee. They have a couple of committees that they could choose from to consider this piece of legislation, and I do believe that it is really the best for them to send it back to, co to committee for further consideration. But in the event that they do not send this back to committee and they decide to vote for further funding for Cop City, then we are on go. We continue to organize, strategize, and mobilize because Cop City will never be built. You're saying it will never be built? I am saying it will never be built. <laughs> Where is the Atlanta civil rights community? on this issue? Uh, probably sitting at home where they have been for quite some time. Um, I, I'm, I'm trying to think about civil rights and the people who normally show up. Um, yeah, no, they, they're sitting at home. I know that Gerald Griggs, the president of the NAACP of Georgia, has given a very strong statement and has been standing against Cop City. But when we talk about the civil rights community, those people who would usually come out, the old guard who stands with the concerned black clergy of Atlanta, a lot of those people, they're nowhere around here. Where they are is in backroom meetings with Andre Dickens, the mayor of Atlanta, and their contacts at the Atlanta Police Department and the APF and those corporations who support them, but they are not here. In backroom meetings, talking about what? I have no idea. More than likely, though, talking about how they can stop us from doing what we have been doing to stop Cop City. Um, I have heard from several people that the concerned black clergy has quite a bit to say about myself and my clergy coalition. Um, none of them has ever come to speak to me about anything. In my public comments today, I did call out Sean Smith, who is the mayor's pastor. He was in this building. I don't know if he is still in this building, but he and his colleagues at the Concerned Black Clergy have stated that I would step over a dead body to save a tree, meaning that I care more about trees than people. Well, what they have to understand is that the trees are the people. We don't have one without the other because we we need each other to live, but we also need them to cut the BS and the boot licking and stop trying to kiss up to Andre Dickens for a place in whatever his circle is. That's interesting for them to say that because don't we sing the song like a tree that's planted by the water? That's right, that's right. Should not be moved. But the fact of the matter is, there are those in the civil rights community who've never fully embraced uh, the environmental justice movement. And they're using that as an excuse. It's not just about the trees, but it's about us being collateral damage. That's right. For this the police department. That's right. And, and wasn't Dr. King, didn't he speak out at the March on Washington six years ago against police violence? He absolutely did. I mean, all the movements that represent this movement, um, Dr. King actually fought for those movements like labor unions. We have labor unions who are a part of this movement against Cop City because we realize what this means for us. We realize that when a facility like Cop City is built, gentrification is accelerated times 10. We realize that it's not good for our economy. We know that, yes, we have to keep touting the environmental justice aspect because this is environmental racism, plain and simple. So if you care about black people and you care about civil rights, why would you not stand up for a black community that's being disenfranchised? You said we're going to go on no matter what. We will. But, but before I, I'm going to get ahead of myself, there's a new issue with money. Mm -hmm. This is going to cost more money than they originally yes. said. Tell us about that. 
So Mayor Dickens originally told the council, as well as the people of the city of Atlanta, that this facility would only be $30 million of taxpayer dollars from the citizens of Atlanta. What has been uncovered by reporting through the Atlanta Community Police Foundation is that the price tag is now more than double. What the mayor has essentially done is allow the Atlanta Police Foundation to take out a loan that the city of Atlanta will have to pay back. Really? Yes. So, and that is what makes the argument that it should go back to committee. Absolutely. The main thing being that these council people did not hear the truth. So if the people who are voting on this did not know the truth, isn't it only appropriate that they would have time to go back in committee to deliberate, to consider, to amend, right, and to debate what this is really about? I don't believe that passing a vote in favor of this funding at this stage is a good faith vote because they don't have all the facts. Uh, what's going on with Michael Julian Bond? This Julian Bond's son. Mm -hmm. Somebody called him out today. He said, don't criticize me. Don't criticize Bring my father's name into it. Mm -hmm. But you don't call yourself Michael Bond. You call yourself Michael Julian Bond. You don't want your father to come up. Stop making us say all three names. Right. So you What's love for people name? to say Michelle. So I we ain't running, you ain't making us say Kiana Michelle Jones, are you? No. No. So only my uncle he, Ricky does that. <laughs> but I'm saying he's promoting his yes. dad's mm -hmm. name, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. He definitely does the Michael Julian Bonds. And when he runs for office on his campaign signs, they say Michael Julian Bonds. And one thing that is, is so funny is that someone actually said to me today, oh, I didn't know that that was Julian Bond, son. I thought his name was just Michael Bond. But you don't just see Michael Bond. You do see Michael Julian Bond. And what I would say is that if you have relied on your father's name to get you where you are and for people to believe your word, then you have to think that people will also bring up your father's name when they see that you are not living up to the values that he so-called embodies. So, yeah. So lastly, you said we were going to go on, mm -hmm. no matter what. And, and thank you for inviting me to be here today. When we say go on, what does that mean? I've been hearing something about referenda and stuff like that. What are we talking about? Absolutely. So if this council doesn't want to vote the will of the people, then we want the people of Atlanta to decide. Let the people vote because the people never got a say in this from the beginning. So let it be the people's choice. This is the people's vote. This is the people's house. This is the people's land. It's only right that the people get a vote. So we will move forward with a referendum to stop Cop City. Thank you. Thank Reverend you. Dr. Jones. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for getting woke and listening to Make It Plain. As always, perform an act of kindness on behalf of an elder or young person. Write a letter to a sister or brother who just so happens to find her or himself incarcerated. Offer libations to the ancestors upon whose sturdy shoulders we all now stand. And above all, give thanks to the God of your understanding by whatever name you call her and him. All God asks of us is that we give each other love. Thanks for giving MIP love. And please remember to subscribe and give us a five-star rating. If all hearts and minds are clear, it has been made plain.